In this video, we're going to discuss a lesser known role of the mosquito, photoreconnaissance. It may be less glamorous than fighters or bombers, but it is vital to the success of the war effort. During World War II, there are a number of ways of finding out what your enemy was doing. You could listen to their radio traffic, but this was often encrypted, so you had to turn to coal cracking services like the famous Bletchley Park to help you read the messages. And that took time. You could send in spies, but good spies were few and far between. So the solution was aerial photography. At the start of World War II, Britain was dangerously short of reconnaissance aircraft. What was needed was a fast aircraft, like a Spitfire, but with long enough range to fly around Europe. So the authorities turned to de Havilland. Could the Mosquito, which was intended to be a fast bomber, be converted to carry all the cameras, film and equipment that was needed for the specialist task of photo reconnaissance? But it was not just a case of using any camera. The photo reconnaissance cameras were big. They needed to be big in order to get a clear enough image, as you can see from these exhibits we have here in the museum. The most popular camera was the F24 camera. This created images of which were 5 inches by 5 inches. You could have up to 250 photos in a roll of film carried in a magazine. The photos were taken using a shutter speed of up to 1,000th of a second. This camera could weigh as much as 20 pounds. Longer lenses and larger image formats offered more detailed images from extremely high altitudes. By 1942, the F-24 was developed into the F-52 that used an image which was 8.5 inches by 7 inches and film magazines with up to 500 exposures. Such was the need for better images and more of them. And it was not just a case of getting hold of a camera and mounting it on an aeroplane. Cameras also needed a lot of film and the mountings needed to be heavy and rigid so that the photos were clear despite the speed of the aircraft and any vibration from the engines. The mounting was important as well. One type of mounting was the trimetagron mount which involves three cameras in one assembly. In the trimetagron one camera is pointed directly downwards and the other two are pointed to either side. When the photos are developed the images will overlap, so if you have the proper equipment, you end up with a three-dimensional effect. This enables you to see enemy equipment easier, and even take reasonably accurate measurements of buildings or aircraft or other equipment. Another issue with photoconnaissance was that you needed to fly at a high altitude. This was to prevent you being hit by enemy gunfire, but at high altitude, your cameras might fog up so the cameras had to be heated. That also added to the weight and complexity. So the specialised version of the Mosquito was developed, the PR Mark I, incorporating all the equipment and cameras that were needed. As before, the first stage was to design and build a prototype. In July 1941, the prototype aircraft joined number one PRU, a photographic reconnaissance unit. It flew its first mission in September 1941 over enemy held Brest and Bordeaux. Eventually the unit would receive 10 PR Mark 1s as well as a number of conversions of Night Fighter Mark 2s and Bomber Mark 4. The arrival of the Mosquito gave the PRU an aircraft with which it could reach across Europe. Missions to Norway began in October 1941 to Danzig East Prussia and Poland in January 1942. From March 1942, the PRU began to perform PR work for Bomber Command, recording the results of bombing raids. The long range of the Mosquito would allow it to reach just about anywhere that the main bomber force could bomb. By the middle of the war, number one PRU had grown to no less than five squadrons. And their success was due in no small part to the photo reconnaissance mosquitoes. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and share on social media. Do leave any comments below and please subscribe to this channel so you can catch up on more videos like this one, which we have planned for the near future.